Hello friends, this marks the beginning of a nine-part series on my channel called My Property Isn't Normal. This was suggested by Grim Creep and Murder Bird, totally awesome, gave me full access to the entire story. So we shall read it over the coming week, week and a half, and I hope that you guys will enjoy. So with that said, let's jump into it. My Property Isn't Normal. Written by Murderbird17. Narrated by Brandon Dayton. You could say I live in the middle of nowhere. I prefer to call it the middle of the wilderness, though. And after living alone out here long enough, I thought I'd become familiar with the land out here, and even get comfortable. But I've never gotten comfortable. Maybe used to this place, but never comfortable. Pretty sure I can hold my own out here for the time being, but even so, lots of weird shit happens out here. Glad to finally have a way to tell strangers who probably won't judge or call me crazy, though. Back to the topic at hand. Weird stuff. I'll start with the first odd experience I had here. When I first purchased this land, I was really excited. There was already a house on the property that was the perfect size for me. Not only that, but it seemed pretty new. Like the former owners didn't stay around very long. Yeah, red flags, but how was I supposed to know how messed up this place was? Anyway, I move in without any issues, and within a week I'm out on some of the trails that were already there, looking for deer tracks or other game trails. I'm already having a pretty relaxing time until I swear I hear a baby say, Mama! in the most stereotypical voice I've ever heard, off in the distance. Now, like I said, I'm here in the middle of nowhere, so there shouldn't be anyone for miles. I just shook it off as me hearing things. Twenty minutes later, I hear the same voice say, Mama! again. Only this time it's forty yards away, on the other side of some trees and brush. It didn't even sound like a real baby. It just sounded like some disturbed dude. Of course, at this point, he is definitely on my property as well. I start making my way through the undergrowth, and then, when I'm sure I'm about to hit where he was, the brush clears out to a clearing, and I finally get a glimpse of the man. He was butt naked, and halfway behind a tree, and flaunting a huge smile while his eyes stay kinda squinty. He was also pretty skinny as I could see his ribs. Now usually when you hear people say, at this moment, my blood ran cold, but honestly, mine didn't. I was looking at some butt-naked crackhead trespassing on my property. He decided to let out another MAMA during the silence when I was trying to figure out my next move, so I promptly responded with a hearty, WHAT THE ACTUAL FUCK ARE YOU DOING? That's when he decided my next move for me. He started running at me, and I might have run away if he hadn't been so scrawny. So when he reached me with that big smile and he looked like he was about to grab me, I punched him in the throat. It was a good punch. I was proud of it, honestly. It would have kept any normal man on the ground for at least a minute. This is when I got the first hint that this wasn't a normal man. While I was standing there, proud of my Mike Tyson-level haymaker, the guy immediately got back to his feet, and before I had time to hit him again, he dive-tackled me to the ground. And it hurt pretty bad. He somehow pinned my shoulders to the ground, and no matter how hard I kicked and punched him, he wouldn't let up, so... I was forced to use Plan B. I pulled out my trusty Bear Grylls survival knife, and I stabbed him in the gut. Twice. This finally got his attention, and he hopped back to his feet, slinging blood all over me in the process. I got back to my feet, knife in hand, and waited for him to do something else. All he did, though, was stick a finger into his wound, and then lick the blood off. And then he cartwheeled into the woods, crying like an actual newborn baby this time. Now, by this point, I was pretty on edge, and right as he got far enough away that I could no longer hear him, I just turned and walked home. I knew I should have run, but running through the woods is so tiring, and I just didn't feel like it. When I got home, all was normal again, for a while. Another story that comes to mind when I think about odd things happening around the area is the event that led me to no longer camp in my woods. By the time that the events in this story took place, I had already experienced quite a few things on this property, and this was easily the third freakiest thing to happen up until that point. 
right behind the naked stab victim that cried like a baby and cartwheeled into our woods. This time I had decided that I wanted to go camping. Despite all the stuff that had happened, I had never been seriously injured in those woods. So, why not go sleep in them? Bad choice, I know. Anyways, the first few hours when I got into the woods went fine. I set up camp, built a fire, burnt myself trying to cook a fucking hot dog, pissed on the fire that burnt me, and then I started to realize that camping's pretty boring when you're all alone. So I decided to go to sleep. Next thing I know, I wake up to the sound of a young girl's voice down in the creek. Sounds like she's about college age. She's saying, Help! I need some help down here! I'm lost! Dad! Help! And I can hear her down by the creek from my tent. Now, this isn't the first time I've been lured into the woods by a voice pleading for help. But this voice was a lot more convincing than the others. Nonetheless, I still brought my newly purchased 45 caliber handgun that I had bought for dealing with the... things on this land. I made my way into the creek, flashlight in hand, and I headed down towards the voice. Soon, I found the source. Now, I didn't put the flashlight beam on her right away because I didn't want to blind her, but I could clearly see the outline of a small girl sitting on the bank of the creek. I got about 15 feet away, and she stopped me, stating that, You really don't need that flashlight with the moon out like this. It wasn't even close to a full moon, so that confused me a little. I replied with, I don't know about you, but I can't see a thing out here. Let me help you though, are, are you hurt? And then I started to shine the flashlight on her, but she screamed STOP before I got to her face. This time her voice wasn't as convincing. I could tell she wasn't human. Now what you guys need to realize is, I'm not a badass, and I'm not trying to sound cool or tough. But ever since something happened three years ago, the same event that caused me to move out here, I don't respond to situations the same anymore. Maybe I'm not scared of death anymore, maybe I'm mentally unstable, maybe I'm just weird, but when I established that this thing wasn't human, I started to smile. It fooled me, it got me out here into the woods, in its domain, and it was probably going to make an attempt on my life, but I might as well piss it off a little. So I flicked my flashlight up and revealed its face. It actually was a girl, sort of. She was super pale and had abnormally large eyes that were completely black. When the light hit her face, her head snapped forward. And she made eye contact with me and her jaw dropped open three times larger than any humans could. And then she screamed. It was loud, like inhuman loud. It sounded like a girl's scream, but as if it were being played through massive speakers to make it ear-splitting. Then I felt something closing around my neck. She hadn't moved, but was somehow choking me, still screaming. I've realized while living here that the entities that can hurt you can also get hurt themselves. Now most of them are tough as nails, but they can be hurt. This memory went through my head just as I felt something warm dripping onto my neck, and my left ear went quiet busted eardrum. I aggressively threw my flashlight at the bitch and it connected with what I assume was her eye. I couldn't tell for sure because I didn't have a flashlight. And yes, I forgot to use the gun. It was new, and in the current life or death situation, I'd forgot it. Luckily this girl wasn't one of the tough ones, and I felt the grip on my neck loosen and her scream stopped. No sooner had I taken my first breath when she bent over backwards possession style and sprinted into the woods in reverse. When I finally caught my breath, I slowly walked back to my campsite and went to sleep in the tent. You might be asking why I didn't go home after that, but it was like a 20 minute hike and my flashlight was broken, so I had to wait until morning. Pretty good sleep though, no noises woke me up. I woke up the next morning expecting my ear to be killing me, but miraculously it was completely back to normal. I later figured out that it was the lady in the tree who fixed my ear, but that's a story for another time. That morning I just packed up everything and headed back home. The only thing that got messed up was my flashlight, so I wasn't even that disappointed in the trip. I still don't camp out there anymore because no matter how weirdly wired I am, that girl really did freak me out a good bit, and I'm sure she's still out there. What you will notice so far is that these entities aren't really effective killers. But that doesn't go for everything out there. 
I can't tell y'all about the property without mentioning Skinny. Fuck Skinny. I understand that skinwalkers are a common topic on the horror scene at the moment, and from what I can tell, I think that's the creature that I'm dealing with. But I could also be wrong, because if this is a skinwalker, it's advanced to another level. Not only does it imitate voice, it imitates appearance, and it really wants me dead, or gone. I like to call it Skinny. I think it pisses him off, though. And when I say his name, I say it loud, because, especially at night, I know he's listening. I've lived here for three years now, and he's been harassing me for about a year. And he's good. One of the smartest things to come after me so far. The only one that can seem to almost get into my head. He tries to lure me out not by pretending to be someone in trouble like the other imitators that I've dealt with before. He's aware that that stuff doesn't work on me anymore. No, he tries to piss me off. He wants me to try and kill him. The problem is, we both know I probably can't. One time he got me, though. I was watching a documentary about veteran suicide. It's a terrible topic. I'm a supporter of our armed forces, and I think it's terrible that our government doesn't take better care of our vets that risk everything overseas so we don't have to. They were doing a slideshow of men who had, unfortunately, lost the struggle with their own demons. I had to look away for a second, because this one guy that appeared on the screen looked too young and happy to have gone to this dark of a place. He was mixed race from what I could tell, athletic looking and had a big dimpled smile on his face. When I look away, I'm suddenly staring at the same kid, outside my window. Same smile, same build, same uniform. One difference. Across his forehead was the word, failure. I instantly knew it was skinny. He wasn't trying to imitate this kid, he was insulting him, and he finally struck a nerve. I had seen him imitate so many other people and try so many other tactics, but this was the one that finally broke me. I was ending this creature. I exploded out of my chair and bolted from my bedroom, grabbed my 45 caliber handgun and proceeded to walk towards the same window the young soldier was still staring through. I got within five feet and saw the word had changed. It now spelled out, I deserved it. After reading this, I didn't hesitate to raise my gun and fire two shots, but I think he ducked him. The bastard is fast. I stormed outside to try and find him, but he wasn't anywhere to be seen. That's when I hear, Gotcha! whispered into my ear, and I was flung against the wall of my house. The gun flew out of my hand in the process, broke two ribs and dislocated my right shoulder. I was a dead man and he knew it. Ever since the incident that led me to buy a house by myself out in the middle of the woods, I don't think I've ever felt fear again. Something is wrong with my head, but I did feel defeat. I fell for his trap, and now he's going to kill me. As these thoughts passed through my brain, I passed out from the pain, and the concussion, probably. Then for some reason that I still don't understand, I woke up. It was bright outside, and I was covered in blood and in more pain than I had ever been in my entire life. But I was alive. Why was I alive? I struggled to stand up with my right arm hanging loosely at my side, and I soon noticed the words carved into the outside wall of my house. Next time. Fuck. Skinny. Ever since I got back from the hospital, I told the doctors I fell off a roof. I've been trying to find ways to deal with or kill a skinwalker. If there is a way, or if he's even a skinwalker, he beat me. I'm usually pretty lighthearted with most of my experiences, no matter how intense they are, but I just can't with this one, because if I lose to Skinny again, I guess I will be signing off for good. Be careful out there, and don't get fooled like me. There isn't always a next time. But hey! Not dead yet, so maybe there will be a next time. I plan on writing down more of my experiences in the future, so keep your eyes peeled for those. Until next time, Cole, signing off. Skinwalkers and tree nymphs and bat girls, oh my. <laughs> this series is going to be a great one, I can already tell. I like it a lot. Thank you so much to Grim Creep for the suggestion. My goodness. When it was suggested to me, he told me that it would fit my voice pretty well, and yeah, I think he's right. Murderbird does kind of write in the same way that I naturally talk, so it's a pretty natural progression, I do think. 
Thank you, as always, for listening. I hope that you guys will keep yourselves safe out there. Watch out for Skinny. <laughs> and until the next time, friends, bye-bye. Welcome back, friends. This is part number two of an ongoing story. If you missed part number one, go ahead and check the pinned comment to navigate things just a little bit easier. With that out of the way, let's jump into this. My Property Isn't Normal, Part 2. Written by Murderbird17. Narrated by Brandon Dayton. I'm happy to see that my experiences from Part 1 got some attention. Wasn't expecting this stuff to actually get any traction. I'm mainly here to vent and have a place to catalog the stuff that happens around my house. People also seem to enjoy the part where the naked dude attacked me, and then cartwheeled into the woods crying like a baby when I stabbed him. Still not sure if he was human. Now, I feel obligated to tell some more of my experiences. Also, feel free to leave any questions you have, and I'll try to answer them in the next post. That being said, if you haven't read part one, I suggest you go back now and read it. I'm going to tell you the following experiences as if you already know about the other experiences I've written about having on this property. This place is not normal after all, and takes some getting used to. Now that the intro's out of the way, I think we can start with Camo. And Camo is a fucking nuisance. The first time I came into contact with him was during the first white-tailed deer season I had on my property. Now, I'm a hunter, but the program that is helping me after the incident, said I wasn't allowed to have guns because the noise draws too much attention. Bullshit. I live in the middle of nowhere, and there isn't anybody else for miles, unless you count the Chosen, but I'm pretty sure that the program isn't worried about them. Luckily, the lady in the tree hooked me up with the 45 caliber I now have in my possession, but I didn't have it upon first meeting Camo, unfortunately. Anyway, back to the story. I first saw him when I was walking towards a ladder stand that I had set up in a tree to watch deer, since I could no longer kill him. And yes, I could have had a bow, but I'm shit with a bow, and I would risk just hurting the animal. And I don't like the idea of an animal that is suffering because I couldn't make a shot that would kill it instantly. Now, as I approach my stand, I notice a figure already sitting in it. He's about the size of a regular human. He was dressed in full camouflage, pants, jacket, boots, hat, face mask and a backpack. He actually seemed like a regular person, which I hadn't seen any of those in the woods for the entirety of the four months I had been living there. The things that live on this property are generally more... extreme. But no matter how relieved I was to see a proper human for once, he was deep in my property, and hunting in my stand. I had to get him to leave. I reluctantly shouted over to him, Hey! You ain't supposed to be here! Time to go, dude! Now I was about 75 yards away and to his left, but I yelled plenty loud for him to hear me clearly. He didn't flinch. He stayed facing straight forward like a statue. What a prick. Look, try to be creepy all you want, but ignoring someone like that is just rude. I know he hears me. I have reason to believe he was just trying to freak me out because I've made him break character before. So after I yell and he ignores me, I start getting impatient. I yelled the same thing at him again a little louder, and still ended up with the same response. What a dick. Now I'm livid because he's making me ruin all chances of seeing deer this afternoon by making me yell at him. So naturally, I start a brisk stroll over to tell him off to his face, or maybe to kick his ass. I already noticed he didn't have a rifle, so I assumed that he was just watching, like I was planning on doing. Of course, he could have had a concealed handgun, but I'm a dumbass, so I didn't consider that. Then suddenly I heard the crunch of something under my foot, and the sudden sound of rope sliding across the surface at high speed. I froze for a fraction of a second, and before I could squeak out an oh shit, I'm hanging upside down by my ankle. There was a loop around my leg that held me suspended seven feet off the ground like a damn cartoon. I was like a fucking Looney Tunes character. I couldn't help but roll my eyes. I immediately knew it was camo, and when I look up, or down, Shit, I was upside down, so I don't really know where I had to look, but I saw him climbing slowly down the ladder. Like, really slowly. What a dramatic guy. If he wasn't so obsessed with appearances, he probably could have killed me. That's what I think he wanted to do anyways. There was a machete on his hip that I could now see, and the blade was chipped at in a way that made it look serrated. Wouldn't have been a very useful tool, unless you wanted to use it to inflict pain. I think the biggest flaw with Camo's trap, though was that he didn't account for the single fact that 99% of people who live alone in the woods learn that carrying a large knife at all times is a necessary thing if you want to stay alive. 
I wish I could tell you that I did a flip after I cut myself down and landed on my feet like some sort of badass, but I didn't. I landed on the back of my neck, and my vision went dark for about 15 seconds, which I guess was enough time for Tweedle Dumbass to finally get to the bottom of my ladder stand. As I stood up, I saw that he was standing completely still at the base of the stand, still about 50 yards away from me, staring at me. I could hear his thoughts from here. Damn, why did he get out? Shit, shit, shit! Then he turned and bolted. The dude was booking. I lost sight of him in less than 30 seconds into the chase and had to give up. I need to jog more. And what's more, by the time I got back to the ladder stand, it was already getting dark. I didn't even get to watch any deer. I've seen Camo on multiple other occasions as well, but I figured him out. He got me the first time, but his traps really aren't that sneaky. They're elaborate, but not sneaky. He always appears in an area that I plan on hunting in. Don't know how he knows where I'm going to be, but I stopped questioning stuff on this land a long time ago. And I always notice him long before I get to the location. Again, I have no idea how he plans this shit out. And secondly, there's always a trap set somewhere directly between where I first spot him and his actual location. Like if I were to draw a line from him to where I see him from, the trap will always be on that line. Another important thing to realize is that none of his traps are fatal. They're all meant to keep me from escaping, but not to kill me. They do hurt, though. One time I almost stepped in a bear trap he had set out, and it for sure would have broken my leg had it got me. The non-fatal part was his downfall. I figured out that he didn't want me to die in a trap. He probably wanted to do the deed himself, or maybe do something else, but he really didn't want me dead in a trap. So all I had to do to get him riled up was die in a trap, right? After the lady in the tree hooked me up with the pistol, a little over a year and a half ago, one of the first problems I wanted to solve with it was the creator of the various nets, ankle snares, and holes that attempted to contain me so many times before, and I knew exactly how I was going to do it. One of Camo's recurring traps was just a large 11 foot deep hole, covered by a large amount of suspiciously patterned sticks and leaves that could literally be seen from 100 yards away. I just had to wait until he used this trap again. After a swinging log that I think was supposed to knock me out, and another net that was meant to land on top of me, I might add that it was made of wire so I couldn't cut through it, but it also had a glare from the sunlight that made it impossible not to see. I finally came across the trap that I was looking for. Four weeks after I got the gun, I find myself walking towards an 11 foot hole, trying to pretend I don't see it. Suddenly, I start falling. I was ready for the fall, and let out a loud yell as I traveled downwards, and as I hit the ground I stayed as quiet as possible, which was hard to do considering the broken toe and dislocated knee I had just received. Fuck Camo for making me do this. I army crawled over to the side of the hole and laid my head against the side to make it look like I had broken my neck, and then I waited. It took 15 minutes for that little prick to dramatically make his way over to me, but I heard him walk up to the edge of the hole. I obviously had to close my eyes to appear dead because I couldn't run the risk of blinking, but I almost smiled when I heard Camo mutter to himself, Oh shit, no, 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 they're gonna be so fucking pissed. I took advantage of the moment and quickly opened my eyes and whipped out my pistol, firing three shots at him as quickly as I could. I missed with all but one. The bullet that met its mark put a hole in Camo's shoulder, and he let out a garbled scream of nonsense and gibberish, something along the lines of, You piece of friggin', I can't believe you did that ass fucking shit, Ah! He did end up running away, but as he ran, I heard him say, F Fuck this dude, I'm, aw oh, shit, I'm fucking done. I was laughing my ass off, till I realized that I was severely injured and had to climb out of this fucking hole. Good thing it was daytime though, or I might not have noticed the black rope that Camo had lowered into the hole while he was cursing at himself for killing me. I somehow managed to pop my knee joint back in based on shit I had seen earlier in life and climbed out to limp my way back to the house. That was a good day. Broken toes are fucking expensive to get treated though. The best part of it is I haven't seen camo since that day. It actually worked. Wish I could pull something like that off with Skinny. Another thing that I guess I need to explain to all of your readers is the lady in the tree. I've mentioned her a few times now, and at least some of you are probably wondering about her. I honestly don't know much about her myself, but she is, hands down, the best thing on this property. My first experience with her was when she healed a broken eardrum that I had suffered when meeting what I think was a banshee down in my creek. It was busted when she screeched really loud, 
And when I went to sleep, I woke up perfectly fine the next morning. I almost thought it was all a dream until I saw the blood still on my pillow and the broken flashlight I had used in personal defense. Well, I guess this was the first time that she affected me directly, but not the first time that she helped me out. The true first time, I didn't even realize it was her until last night. It was the gun. The gun that I talked about purchasing in part one wasn't really purchased. I just wasn't willing to admit that I had looted it off of an old corpse that I had found in an abandoned log cabin in the back of the property. This is an example of how sneaky she is. I only started to wonder if it was her doing while I was recording the first set of these stories, and I started thinking about how good a shape this gun was in. Of course it was a little dirty when I found it, but it was also in perfect operating condition, and I figured that the skeleton that was clutching it didn't need it anymore, but hell, at this point I wouldn't be surprised if he came to life each night. Either way, I left the cabin with a new sidearm and two boxes of ammunition. I didn't really think that much about it because... Finding a gun on a body is pretty mild considering the events that go down here on a week-to-week -week basis. But yesterday I started questioning the real origins of this gun. It was so well maintained and new feeling when I got it, but the skeleton looked like it had been there forever. Not to mention the fact that the gun was unloaded and the boxes of ammunition were unopened. But the skeleton looked like it had died holding the gun like he was intending to use it. It didn't add up. So I headed back to the cabin and I found my answer. Everything was the same when I got there as it had been over a year ago. I meant nothing had changed, especially not the body. The exact same as before. I was nervous at first, not because the body scared me, but because the joke about the skeleton coming back to life from earlier wasn't really that far-fetched in this place. I'd never seen an undead skeleton, but I have seen other forms of undead. Maybe I'll tell y'all about those experiences sometime. Nervous or not, though, I just had to confirm my suspicions. I approached the body and started examining the clothes. Just like I expected, the flannel shirt and brown jeans had no tag. Not like they had been ripped out, but like they were never there to begin with. Now there was only one more thing to check. I took out my knife and scraped the blade down the skeleton's exposed arm bone. Sure enough, a shaving fell off. It was wood. The entire skeleton was made of wood and painted a lightish brown, among other discolorations, to look like the real deal. The lady in the tree is very talented when it comes to wood, but she can do so much more. I've only seen her in person two times, once when I caught a glimpse of her smiling as she walked into an opening into a tree only to close the opening with a door that fit so perfectly I couldn't see the edges when I walked up to it. It just looked like a normal tree, and a second time two days after I encountered the screeching banshee in the creek, I saw her out the window of my front door, smiling in. She winked at me and ducked out of view. I ran to the door to try and see her more fully, but by the time I swung the door open, she was gone into the night. Nowhere to be seen. Which is really annoying. I would almost consider us to be friends by now, and she still won't show herself to me fully. Now, when I saw her for the second time, I didn't know what or who she was. But when I looked at the ground and the feet, I noticed the small sheet of what looked like homemade paper. On it was a short message that read, I wish to congratulate on killing the Keelut. He was bringing an evil over the land that was distressing the forest. I don't know how you actually ended him, but I'm happy all the same. I've seen you roaming, and I'm certain you've seen me. We work towards the same goal, cleansing this land. My vows as a medicine woman keep me from directly interfering with the creatures of this land, but I wish you luck on your mission, and I'll support you from the shadows as best I can. I hope your ear feels better. So maybe the key loot she was talking about me killing, I think it was a rabid coyote that I had killed a few weeks before the creek incident. It was hairless and just stared at me through the trees. I think it was trying to intimidate me to leave its territory, so I shot it between the eyes and left. My territory, bitch. But this was the first time that I realized that I finally had someone on my side on this land, and that was a relief. She was actually really helpful. Once I got bit by a rattlesnake, and when I got home, there was a bottle labeled Anti-Venom sitting on my kitchen table. Another time, I got bit by one of the shadow children while I was hiking, and when I got home, there was a bottle of purple liquid in a glass vial in the same place on the table. I honestly expected it to heal the wound or something, but it just made me really drunk. Guess she couldn't help me much that time. She's done other stuff too, but now I'm kind of worried about her. I haven't heard or experienced anything from her in eight months. I'm worried something got to her, 
Or even worse, what if she's mad at me? I mean, Skinny almost killed me six months ago and she didn't do shit. I've grown to like her and even depend on her a bit, but she's just... gone. I think I'll call it quits for this post, but hopefully I can stay alive long enough to post more. The hunt for Skinny continues, and if you don't know who that is, shame on you for not reading the first post before now. And if you do know who that is, I appreciate any suggestions you have for killing him. See you all next time. Cole, signing off. Camo and the Medicine Woman Well, I certainly hope that the tree lady's alright. Maybe she's just laying low. Or maybe the forest has gotten distressed to the point where it can't necessarily sustain her anymore. I'm not sure how connected she is to the forest. She is called the Tree Lady, but she calls herself a medicine woman, so my thought is she might be human? Anyways, I am glad the camo's out of the way, and hopefully we won't see any more of him, but it does seem that he was working for some people, so I guess we'll have to see how that works out. And as always, try to keep yourself safe out there. Watch out for traps. I will see you in the next one. And until then, friends, bye bye This is part number three of an ongoing story. If you've missed parts one and two, check the pinned comment to navigate things a little bit easier. And with that out of the way, let's jump into this. My property isn't normal. Written by Murderbird17. Narrated by Brandon Dayton. Hey guys, I'm back. I know it's been a few days since my last post. One of the pails chewed through the wires of my generator, and since civilians aren't allowed out here by the organization, I had to wait three days for one of their electricians to get out here. The only reason I knew it was a pail that chewed through the main cable was because I watched it do it. I was hoping it would electrocute itself, but I forgot the part where that's the only source of power for my house, since the Chosen had stolen my backup. This is probably a good time to say that if you haven't read the first two installments of this series, you should, because I highly doubt any of this will make any sense. They aren't long, and I'll link them at the bottom of this post. Back to the regularly scheduled programming, I realized while I was stuck in the dark for the past three days reading books, hiking out of pure boredom, that I haven't told you all about the pails yet. They suck. They're kind of funny once you figure them out. I've seen them on quite a few occasions on the property. The pails are white humanoids that crawl on the ground on all fours, usually dragging their belly and using the same motion that Spider-Man uses to climb walls. They can move at about a jogging pace, and their faces are usually stuck in distorted expressions of pain or anger, and boy, are they stupid as all hell. Let me tell you about the first time I saw one. I had already been living at this place about seven months, I think, so I was kind of becoming familiar with the weird shit that calls this place home. I was out hiking some of my trails, kind of halfway looking for weird shit, halfway minding my own business. And suddenly I can hear what sounds like a baseball player sliding through the leaves of the forest floor, trying to reach home plate ahead of me. Only the sliding didn't stop, and it was coming straight towards me. I prepare myself by taking out my trusty Bear Grylls survival knife and entering what I would describe as an aggressive stance. Felt pretty badass, I'm not gonna lie. Expecting some creature to come barreling out of the bushes in front of me, I was a little shocked to see a butt-naked man with super pale skin drag itself from under the brush on its stomach. What is it with fucking naked dudes on my land? Can't I get a pretty woman at least once? Anyways, after I got done being flabbergasted and became aware of my surroundings again, I became aware that the dude was almost on me and was reaching out for my leg. So I jumped on his back, and it worked like a fucking charm. This little bastard didn't have superhuman strength like some of the things out here, so when I landed on its back, it couldn't do anything but sit there and flop its arms and legs around like a fish. <laughs> At this point, I'm on the verge of tears. It hears me laughing and turns its head to try and spit on me, which it can't do, and that made me actually start crying laughing. I fell off it at this point, and the creature quickly turned around and locked its teeth onto the toe of my left boot. I like to wear steel toe boots around the property because even though they're heavy, I know that in a scuffle being able to kick with a boot and not having to worry about breaking a toe is a nice little advantage. This is what led me to realize that, even though the creature didn't have super strength, it did have a super bite force. When it first latched onto my boot, I wasn't worried, and started trying to shake the thing off without much urgency. I already knew it wasn't a man by this point because it didn't possess an asshole or other genitals. 
But I got a little worried when I started to notice the end of my boot changing shapes as the steel in the end started to bend. I then said out loud, If you don't stop right now, I'm going to stab you right in the head, you little shit. It paused as if debating on the decision, and then slowly started biting down again while its eyes looked up at me as if trying to call my bluff. I wasn't bluffing. A few seconds later, the thing is frantically clawing its way back into the forest with my favorite Bear Grylls survival knife still in the back of its stupid fucking head. Nobody likes a thief. Got back home fine, but I had to replace my favorite knife and get a new pair of boots, so it was a pretty shitty hike. It was the next time I saw one that I figured out what their biggest fear is, and it is so stupid. I was down in my creek, playing with a new toy I had gotten earlier in the week. It was this net that was designed to catch little minnows and shit, and it was actually a blast. I don't really have any use for minnows or whatever little fish I was catching, because I can't go to the only pond on the property that had big fish in it since I made that deal with the crocodile man. So I was just catching them and letting them go. I'm suddenly greeted by the somewhat familiar sound of a grown man sliding across the ground on their belly. It had been almost two months since the last incident I had with a pail, but I immediately recognized that sound. This was the dunce that had stolen my knife, and I really valued that Bear Grylls survival knife that can be purchased at your local Walmart. It really is a good product. <laughs> Unfortunately, the pail that emerged this time wasn't the same one. It had a different face and was more of a light pink than the original white that was on the first pail. It was still the same type of creature, though. This time, things went down different. As it tore into the clearing that I was in, about 30 feet from me, it froze, with its eyes wide. As it had torn through the brush, I was already facing its direction, holding the net spread out to my side the same way a bullfighter holds a red cape, since I was preparing to throw the net into the creek. The pale's eyes were switched between looking at the net and looking at me, so I looked at the net and back to him, and then it clicked. No way, I giggled to myself, and I started to catch on what was happening. I took advantage of my suspicions and started running and flailing the net around at the pail, and it freaked the fuck out. It actually rolled over trying to turn so fast as it spun around and took off into the woods. I then started wheeze laughing as I fell on the ground with tears running down my face. This fucking thing can bite through steel, but it's terrified of a nylon net. I know that might not be funny to some, because I have a twisted sense of humor, but it made my week. Long story short, I keep the little net in my hiking bag every time I go out now, and every pail I've come across is utterly mindfucked at the sight of it. Good times, man. Wish all the things around here were that easy to deal with. On another note, I got an email from an organization asking me about the key loot that the lady in the tree claimed that I had killed in the last post. They wanted to know if I had disposed of the body, and if they could come and retrieve the remains from the woods if I had just left it. Then they said something that caught me off guard. When I said something about having to check with the program that put me out here, they responded with, We are the parent organization of that program, and proceeded to give me my own address as well as details about my formal life that only the program should have known about. In all seriousness, I have a dark past, and haven't always been a great man, but I'm done with that shit, and it pissed me off that they would even bring it up again. I responded with a simple, Fine, but don't bring that shit up again, and blocked the emailer. No one has shown up yet, but I guess we'll see what happens. On a good note, I haven't seen Skinny in a couple of weeks, so that's nice. See you all next time. Feel free to leave your questions in the comments. And if you have any ideas what these pails are, or what a key loot is, please tell me. If any of you are good with research stuff, I'd appreciate it. Talk to you again soon. Hey Cole man, if you're getting some of that Walmart money for plugging the Bear Grylls survival knife, Maybe you could kick some to your old pal Dayton dies, you know? <laughs> I'd definitely appreciate that. We got bills to pay around here. I'm sure you do too, although it seems like the organization is taking care of an awful lot of stuff. I'm quite curious about the background and... I mean, there's a lot of stuff to be curious about in this story. What is the organization? Why did they put him there? What is his actual background? And then, on top of all that, it's just the the menagerie of creatures so very very interesting series i can't wait to see how it turns out it's so short is is what gets to me like nine parts there's so i know you can't fit everything that i want to know into nine parts but uh, i guess we'll see how close we can get anyways friends thank you as always for listening along with me 
I hope that you'll like, comment, and or subscribe if you did enjoy. And join me again for another No Sleep Creepypasta. I can't in good conscience say tomorrow anymore because I've skipped a few days and, and I'm still kind of beating myself up about it. But I'm going to try and be more consistent. Anyways, keep yourselves safe out there. I shall see you in the next one. Keep a net with you. Watch out for pails. <laughs> and until then, friends. Bye-bye.